learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I thought I'd make an unusual video today and talk about what's going on in our country. Some of the advantages to having your own property far away from city life with this civil unrest that's going on. I kind of have to be careful on what words I use because YouTube demonetizes. So back in 2014, we had the Ferguson, Missouri riot. Same situation, the horrible situation that occurred. And they burned down auto parts stores and burned cop cars. The thing is, is I lived, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 miles southwest of Ferguson at the time. A little town called Pacific, Missouri. I lived in an apartment and I really felt unsafe there because it was an apartment and you, you, there was just no way to really, for lack of a better word, defend yourself or even close yourself in so you didn't feel like this could happen to you. I mean, if they decided to come down Highway 44, just a few miles, it, I would have been pretty vulnerable if they decided to burn down our apartment building. Well, just a few months after th that, I think that was in August, in October, we moved to a, a town just a little bit further southwest of that called St. Clair, Missouri. And this time we moved out into the country. We weren't actually in the city limits of St. Clair. We were several miles outside of St. Clair and we had eight acres. But I felt so much secure when the riots started back up. If I recall, that, that's what happened. Uh, anyway, for some reason, I felt much more secure there. That if they decided to come down, it was unlikely, first of all, that they would actually make it out to the rural area. Even though I was only a few miles further southwest from Pacific to St. Clair, I felt a heck of a lot safer. Pacific is a more of a city environment. I mean, it's not St. Louis City, but it is definitely a suburb, I guess, of St. Louis, where St. Clair is more of just a, a town out southwest of St. Louis. Here we have this civil unrest going on now. And it's the same thing. This time, it's spreading. It's all over the country. It started out in Minnesota. Then it's in, you know, Washington, D.C. And it's in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's in L.A., I think. And I guess it's in New York City, just everywhere. Again, you know, when, when I said L.A., I was thinking about when I was in the Navy. I think in 92, the L.A. riots happened. I was in the Navy right after the riots. We ported in L.A. Well, San Diego, I guess, actually. And the, the riots had just finished up just a few days before we got there. And I remember how frightening it was being in the area. You know, could this happen again? And once again, I had left a place of security. I lived out in the country before I went in the military. A place to kind of just, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Hide maybe is a, a good example. So I always felt like the country was safer than being in near city during these times of civil unrest. And then just a few months ago, the, the pandemic struck. And I was talking about in a video, I don't know, two or three weeks before we were all put down on a lockdown. I don't know, maybe a month or two. And I was saying how, you know, we got this off grid property. Well, at the time when I made that video, we were still at mom's house. We just bought the property and we were staying there to get the solar panels and just different things that we needed so we could set up. And what we were waiting for was a nice warm bread, you know, a week or two where we could come down here and get things set up so we didn't freeze to death while we're trying to get the camper off the truck and get the water set up and all that. So, so we came down here on March 3rd. And back then I was even saying, you know, it's a really good idea to get away from society as much as possible during these times. And man, it just seems like one after another after another is happening. The, the other thing is, is while you're out here, you can take care of yourself. I, for the most part, have not left the property during this pandemic. I mean, we've been shopping, I think, what, three times, grocery shopping. We buy enough food to last us a month and there's plenty to do. You know, they keep saying, get yourself some vitamin D, go outside, because so many people are locking themselves up in the house. Well, we've been outside more than we've been inside. So we're always outside, if, if nothing else, just to walk around the property and admire the pretty flowers and things. Nobody's coming over here to bother us or talk to us. You know, when we walk, we don't even have to pass strangers on the road. It's, it's us, total isolation. 
uh, safe from things that can harm us in these times of, of, of uncertainty and civil unrest. Now, I've always thought when these things happen, the civil unrest things happen, they tend to happen in places where they don't feel very threatened. The people that are causing all the damage, they don't feel threatened. I know at Ferguson, they attacked Ferguson, and it was a couple days before business owners decided that they were actually going to take up arms and stay outside their own businesses. And I thought, man, in the state of Missouri, you, you waited that long to go out there armed. And I understand why. When you go to a city, being armed is taboo. It's, it's frowned upon. And so you don't go and do it. One reporter went up to this one business owner and he's got his, his rifle. Of course, the humiliation, you know, the reporter trying to tell him, oh, that's terrible. And the guy said, well, you know, I just don't have a choice. I got to defend my building. Are you actually going to fire that thing at someone? Legally, I guess it's, you can't. You got to stand your ground, but that's only if inside your building here in Missouri. So it's more of an intimidation tool, I guess, in Ferguson. But here in, in rural America, it's not frowned upon at all. And I'm not trying to advocate one way or another. I'm not big on trying to promote political ideas. But being out in rural America, if you favor being able to protect yourself, because we can see that the police officers can't protect us. Buildings are still getting burned down. If you're standing your ground in your own little tiny camper, and you see a mob of people rushing to your tiny camper, I think you could actually defend yourself and say that you are in fear of your life because you really have no place to go. They can't say, well, you should have waited for the police because the police here are probably 20 miles away. They're not gonna be close. Whereas in a, in a city setting, they are there and they got barricades and all the things that deter people from doing things although it's not very effective. But here's what I will say about living on your own piece of property, out in the country, off grid in a tiny house, is you feel safer. You feel tucked away, hidden, from the prying eyes of society. Now the thing is, is if, if I needed help, I'm new to the area, I don't know anybody. I've, I've met this neighbor up here and one neighbor over here. But if I needed help, I could probably get a hold of one of these guys and there would be an army of people here in a matter of minutes helping me defend myself, defend Carolyn, defend my things. And we would all, I think, be in our legal rights to do so based on Missouri's laws, how you can protect yourself, castle doctrine. And with my castle being so small, I would clearly fit into that. But the castle doctrine is simply a doctrine that says that you're allowed to defend your castle, your home, and you don't have to, a duty to retreat from your home. So it wouldn't take much to deter people. Now, I would suspect that these protesters are not all that interested in getting hurt. They might be okay with getting arrested, but they're not interested in getting hurt. So if one gunshot rang out, it would seem to me that they're gonna disperse pretty quickly. They're not coming out, I don't think, to hurt people. I think they're coming out to terrorize people. And so there's a huge advantage. And I, mean, I think this is, might get a little controversial and I don't know how to really explain it, but I think that's the difference between the mindset of folks in the city and the folks in the country, is we don't want to be social, is probably the best way to put it, out here in the country. And then we try to be neighborly when Neighbors need help, but rarely do, does anybody need help out here. It's an independent mindset. I'm not gonna call the cops. Well, I know a lot of folks in the city. Remember, I was in the city too. I was in the city and I was in the country. Much prefer the country. In the city, folks rely on each other for everything. It's not a mindset of independence. It's a mindset of community. And so if you're prepared to, to be independent and take care of yourself, Security is one of those things that you do to be independent. I remember one time I was talking to a guy when I lived in, well, another, it was a village is what it was, a township. And he says, you know, if we were ever attacked, and, and he named off a movie, Red Dawn, 
He says, if we were ever attacked like that out here in the country during deer season, they would never make it to the ground from, you know, out of their airplanes. They were parachuting out of their airplanes. They'd never make it to the ground because all the deer hunters. And I, th I thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, I mean, it's just an independent mindset where, where you're going to grow your own food. You're going to make your own electric. So if the power grid goes down during this time of unrest, we have our own power. Even if it's just a generator. I thought I'd just throw it out there to give you some inspiration to think about your own security and how to go about it and that maybe city life is not the place to be in these times of unrest thanks for watching